Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make working with units in C Sharp extremely, extremely easy. And especially if you're in enterprise development or you're doing heavy domain related work with units of measurement, mass, temperatures, anything that can be measured in a unit, then this video is for you. Let me show you what I have here. I have the weather API and I'm going to go to program.cs. We have just this endpoint and I'm going to show you how we will solve the units problem. So here you can see we have a record which has the temperature in Celsius and then it generates a few random weathers. And if I just very quickly run this API so you can see what's going on here. When I call the endpoint, I get five random weathers that keep changing and the temperature is in Celsius. Now, realistically, if this was a real API, you wouldn't just be returning Celsius. Now you might say you will also return Fahrenheit because that's what some cultures use and some countries use. But it goes deeper than this, because if you use any real weather API, they actually allow you to pass the unit that you might want in the query string. So in reality, you would have something like this. You would say unit equals, so you would say in this case, degrees Celsius. Now, okay, we have the unit, or maybe we would have passed Celsius or C or something like that. And then we would have a switch that grabs that and converts it into um, something that is an enum or whatever, and we pass it down into a service that does a conversion that takes that, and then we put the calculation of exactly how much we need to change that. But this is all very complicated, and it's things you don't really need to know. And you don't need to know because the library that makes all of this extremely, extremely easy, and that library is called units.net. So if I say units.net over here, and I add this library, Watch what I can do. I can now take this unit coming from the query string and I can say the following. I can say var past unit equals temperature dot pass unit. And I'm going to pass the unit over here. And now I have this type, which is a temperature unit. And what I can do now is I can go down here and I know that this is Celsius by default. So I'm going to say temperature from degrees Celsius. I'm going to pass down the degrees and then I'm going to say because it's incoming from the query string I'm going to say as so I want this as my pass unit and if I just do that and I run my API again then look what I can do I can go back here I can pass down degrees of Celsius and as you can see now we have the exact same thing but I can also say degrees Fahrenheit and now I get the equivalent amount in Fahrenheit I can even say Kelvin if I want to and I get Kelvin and I didn't have to write any of that because this library has an insane, incredible amount of different units you can pass with auto conversions. If I go here in the demo, you can actually see that I can say, for example, uh, length dot from, and it can be from meters, kilometers. It can be from, let's say from two meters. And then I can get that. I can say var length is that, and I can say console.writeline, and let's see what I can do with this. Well, I can turn it into a unit, or I can convert it into another unit, but I can also at compile time, say, into feet, for example. So how long is two meters in feet? It's probably six, five or something. Yeah, here we go. Um, how much is it in hands, which is also a measurement, which is... Anyway, so it is exactly 19... Is it like this or is it like this? I don't know. Basically, this library allows you to control all that. Not only can you use it like this, but it actually supports multiple ways of working with different types of units. So you have length and you can multiply the meters using the multiply operator, and this will all work. You can divide all of these operators are overloaded, so they will behave as you would expect in a math fashion. And then you have things like if you calculate uh, speed kilometers per hour, and then minutes, you will get the distance that you can travel in these minutes. Same with acceleration, same with rotational speed. There's so, so much you can do by bringing all of these things together. And you don't need to know any of those calculations. You didn't know about any of that. It's just built in for you. The NuGet package that makes all of this possible is called units.net. And it is an excellent, excellent NuGet package. I have talked about it in the past, so I highly recommend you give it a go. And if you like what you see, please check the link down below and give it a start on GitHub. It is honestly amazing what you can do with this. And I've personally used it on Dome Train 
on some areas. As a matter of fact, we just released 23 new courses on Dome Train covering every single design pattern. The first 200 of you who check them out can use discount code PATTERNS20 at checkout to get a further 20% off because bundles are already discounted anyway at 20%. So it's a great opportunity to learn every single design pattern. But with something like this, you can literally go crazy. And all of that, by the way, fully supports serialization. So JSON, XML, there's libraries and additional packages that make all of that possible. What I also find awesome is how you can use cultures as well. So you can say English, for example, and let's just use American English here. So I can say new culture info, um, EN US. And then I'm gonna say var Russian over here mainly because it looks different. Um, and I'm going to say culture info, are you, are you? And I have these different cultures. And if I say var one kilo is mass dot from kilograms, and let's say just one, then I can say in the console, write line one kilo dot to string, and I can pass down a culture and I can do the same with Russian. And if I just run this, then what you're going to see is that no, kilos are not question marks in Russian. That's my console not being able to display Cyrillic. So I'm going to go to the terminal and I'm going to do .NET run. And this terminal should support it. Here you go. You have one kilo and one kilo, but in Russian. In general, in insane library, I know many people working for inventory software and like logistics, and they have to know about shipping weights and length and package sizes. And this sort of thing makes calculating all that uh, so incredibly easy. And you can use this in front end as well if you want with something like Blazor, because you can also provide on the front end the ability to localize or use whichever mass metric you want or whatever speed metric you want and so on. Great, great library. If you want to see the use cases of UnitsNet in action, then at the bottom of the GitHub page I linked below, which is a page of the package, you can see many use cases from demos uh, as well as which companies or which products are using it. So there's a list and it's pretty extensive and it's used in many, many, many different areas. And actually, I just realized this Microsoft Power Toys, which is a repo with 105 or 111,000 stars, extremely, extremely, extremely widely used is using UnitsNet as well as the IoT uh, repo and, and many, many others. So this is safe. This is widely used. You probably use this without even knowing it already. That's how popular it is. And if you do any type of work with any type of unit, I highly recommend you check it out. Give it a star. It really makes a difference. You can go crazy with something like this. In fact, in the comments down below, please let me know how you would use this for your own use cases. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.